The Prime Minister has offered up billions of dollars of cash bonuses to state and territory governments that beat targets on the number of new homes built. Live to Joel Philp in Canberra, the money equates to $15,000 per house built, Joel. It does, Pete, but first those state and territory governments need to smash the Commonwealth's original target for its national housing accord of one million homes built over a five-year period starting from mid-next year onwards. At National Cabinet yesterday, state and territory leaders agreed to a new target of 1.2 million homes and the federal government put $3 billion on the table as incentive payments to get those last 200 homes built and 200,000 homes built, rather, and the payment will only be made if those homes are built. The building sector says that the Prime Minister has delivered with this pledge and that they believe the construction of that many homes is possible. The Albanese government has listened. They've put those incentives on the table. It is now up to the governments to implement those as quickly as possible. We need to get on with it and get on with it now. The industry is ready. We have capacity. The premiers and chief ministers also agreed towards working towards the more nationally consistent policies when it comes to renters' rights, but the Prime Minister acknowledged that immediate action in this space isn't possible right now. Uh, what we want to do is to work towards uh, greater national consistency, but we're not in a position uh, to flick the switch and just change eight pieces of legislation across states and territories immediately. The Labor Party just spat in the face of the nearly 8 million people in this country who rent and offered them basically nothing. And let me tell you, they, can't, they can polish a turd all they like, but no rent is going to buy this. The Greens housing spokesperson there and the party has of course been blocking the federal government's social housing future fund in the Senate here in Canberra and while those negotiations have been stalled, the federal government has pledged more than $5 billion in other housing incentives. So the Greens feel yeah. that their delay tactics have been successful so far, Pete. OK, Joel, Phil, appreciate that. Thank you. Let's keep that chat running now with the uh, Chief Investment Officer at the Motley Fool, Scott Phillips. Scott, good to see you. So how do you feel about all this? I, I suppose the proof will be in the pudding, but um, the NBA likes it. Yeah, funny that, Pete. Uh, they they get all the work. Benefit from building houses. What more houses built? How about yeah. that? Um, mate, look, look, this is this is a plan for a plan for a plan. Really, honestly, look, politics aside, uh, Albo says there was no flick to, uh, switch to flick. I'm not entirely sure that's right, mate. We have meaningful housing shortages right now. Meanwhile, population is growing. We don't have the houses being built. Do the maths. It's pretty straightforward in my, in my mind uh, what can and should be done. But unfortunately, they're simply not prepared to grasp the nettle. A plan for a five-year plan for more houses, as Joel Philp just said, um, on top of the plan that was announced a couple of years ago, or well, last year, sorry, for a million houses. Um, you just keep increasing the numbers and, and kicking the can down the road. Uh, this is not a solution, unfortunately. It's not going to change. Frankly, if this is going to happen, that happen anyway. I mean, home, homeowners, home buyers don't need a 15 grand uh, you know, incentive to, to buy or build a home when there's a rental shortage. They need it to be more affordable. They need to be able to access it. They need the planning rules change if that's appropriate in cities and states. Uh, so, you know, uh, look, I, I don't know, mate. It, it, it really strikes me that the PM and the Premier's Felt like they needed to say something. Mm. By the way, I'm not sure the Greens' solution is right either. So we got, we got, you know, on one hand, people who don't want to do much. On the other hand, uh, the Greens, who don't have to be responsible for any of these things, making these sort of right. claims. There is, is, there is absolutely middle ground somewhere. What is the solution, though? Mate, I th so I think, I think in the short term, we've got population issues. Uh, we know, you know, Albo said you can't flick a switch. He's right, except you can when it comes to the rate of population growth. So you start there and you say, so, so hey, you while things it. are a bit out of, built, out of kilter, I think you've got to. I, I don't, I, you know, you, uh, saying, well, there's only so many houses, let's bring more people in that despite that, it, 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 if this was any other business, if this was your business, and you said, hang on, we've got this problem here. Imagine, think, think about the Matildas last night, right? We've only got so many seats. We've got more people coming in than we need. Uh, we can't put them in the seats. And someone says, how about we build more seats over the next 10 years? You'd say, you know what? Why don't we just slow down the, the people coming into the stadium for a bit, wait till the seats are built, and then by all means, we can bring more people in and have more people cheering on the Matildas. That mm. That is hopefully not a terrible analogy for what's going on. Now, there is, we do have to build more houses. We do have to deal with the supply issues, Absolutely. But to the very valid point of we can't do it tomorrow, OK, so what can you do today, tomorrow, next week, next year, while we wait for supply to catch up? I, I don't honestly, mate, see how this is a difficult right. conversation, but the mm. numbers are the, are the maths of the maths. OK. So, you know, the rezoning and, and, and you know, increasing supply, it's, that's fine long term, but in the short term, which is true, in the short term, the yeah. only real quick fix is to drop the number of people coming into the country. 
Uh, quite literally, man. That, uh, you know, right. you, and we do need to change other things, by the way. So the supply issues need to be dealt with. The premiers and the PM aren't wrong about that. We need to solve for that. But in the meantime, uh, you know, it's like saying, well, we're going to have a crisis for another five or six years. But by 2032, we'll be OK. Uh, plenty of people out there, you know, this is where the Greens are, right, saying, you know what, no one's going to swallow yeah. this idea of, you know, I've, I've got a plan for a decade's time. They're saying, well, I've got to get housing today. I've got to pay the rent tomorrow. Uh, what are you guys doing to help? At the moment, the answer seems to be nothing difficult. OK. Did you watch the game last night, Scott? Oh, I did, mate. Heartbreaking. Yeah. The girls did spectacularly well, mate. So proud of them. Uh, a, a remarkable, remarkable tournament. So yeah. likeable. They tried so incredibly hard. Uh, really proud of the Matils. I reckon they've, they've got a new generation yeah. of fans. Certainly my young bloke is a, is a massive fan now. Yeah, we all are. We all are. Uh, the pride of the nation they are. Scott Phillips, thank you.